Neil Campbell and his wife Lynn farm on 650 effective hectares near Fairley in South Canterbury. A graduate of the Kellogg Rural Leadership Programme, Neil credits that for the changes made on the farm, which eventually resulted in them becoming the Lincoln Foundation Farmer of the Year for 2017. I always had a belief that if I could put myself in the top 10% for production, i.e. lambing percentage, weight of lamb, sold, etc., that we'd have a profitable business. But it basically wasn't happening. And in 2007, I was fortunate to be selected to be part of the Kellogg's Rural Leadership course for that year. We sat down and did a SWOT analysis of our business, what we had in our control and what was out of our control, and went from there and made some significant changes. I guess one of the weaknesses that we had, we were selling 90% of our product from January to March, and that coincided with your seasonal lows for all those products. And consequently, often in dry seasons, you were forced to sell into depressed store markets, and also when the export market was at its lowest. So we looked at ways how we could mitigate that type of thing. And yeah, we also looked at our country and how best to utilise it. We've now got deer on a highest altitude country where the spring's late and that suits the fawning of the hinds. In venison, you've got a premium product that people are prepared to pay for. And I guess at the same time, a plant called Fodderbeet came along and we thought that had a part to play in this business I guess the thing that surprised me most was how much it is actually within your own control, within your farm gate. You know, traditionally, I think New Zealand's guilty of being based too much on ryegrass, totally, in pastoral systems. And I think our plant breeders have done a tremendous job in breeding plants that will produce tremendous volumes of dry matter at specific times of the year. And through that, we've been able to mitigate some of drought. And also, with fodderbeet, we can have a quality food available from March to November and on that we can now produce stock for sale on the shoulders of the season outside that traditional low period. I guess what we've learnt by using these different protein sources apart from ryegrass and I'm not just referring to fodder wheat, I'm talking about grazing maize, I'm talking about summer turnips, I'm talking about rapes, I'm talking about relish red clover. We haven't got irrigation and we never will but some of these plants have tremendous ability to harvest and utilise very small amounts of moisture. And, and, um, and then that plant can sit and you can harvest that when you want it and to provide a product when the market wants it. We got ourselves to the stage where we felt as though we were in the top 10% for sheep production, you know, lambing percentage and that type of thing we were happy with and couldn't see the potential to improve that a lot more. So we started to analyse our business on a cents per kilogram of dry matter produced and what that could earn for us. We found dramatic differences in what that could earn us and a breeding new policy at 150%, earning 10 or 12 cents. Our dairy heifers, dairy support, earning 25 cents a kilogram of dry matter, paid every month, guaranteed from year to year. Our venison, earning close to 20 cents a kilogram of dry matter, and so we really just looked at where we could earn most and, and we, we introduced a, a proportion of trading stock, bulls. So that gave us flexibility in dry years so we weren't having to buy huge amounts of supplementary feed or replace with capital stock after a drought, those types of scenarios. At a peak we had three and a half thousand ewes. We've got 500 now. Uh, my accountant tells me it's for sentiment. Um, I say we need something to clean the lanes up. Uh, there's been a good turnaround of the land price in the last three or four months. I'm really pleased for it because the industry needs it, but I can't see the ewes being replaced here. When we look at trading options, we know what our livestock will produce. We've recorded what the expected live weight gains are, and so that means you can accurately predict what they are going to earn you in cents per kilo dry matter. Well, we went into the dairy support initially because of what they could earn, but they don't fit the natural grass growth curve as well as some other classes of livestock. But their earning ability is so far ahead that we can compensate that by growing specific crops. And part of that crop scenario is fodder beet. So fodder beet, you know, I, I say it's doing for us here on these foothills what Lucerne does for Doug Avery and Blenheim. It can be fed basically from March till November. We've had very good live weight gains on cattle through till November. 
Uh, traditionally, brassicas have gone past it in September. It's expensive to establish, but it's competitive as long as you get a yield. There's lots of other advantages, like it, it's very pest tolerant. It requires very little in, and it grows very well in small amounts of moisture. Fodder beet can be trampled to the ground, but when ground conditions allow, you can cultivate it back up and eat it, and it's as good as it had never been in the ground. So yeah, it's a real game changer for us on this class of country. The year I did the Kellogg's course, we looked at our gross farm income then, and what it is now since we've made the changes. Back then we had three income sources, now we've got seven, and, um, and our gross far farm income is two and a half times of what it was then, and so um, I think that's well ahead of the inflation rate. So yeah, it's been huge. Um, we're a financially strong business now. Uh, previously we considered a good year was if we didn't have a loss or we've made a slight surplus. Uh, now we try to see how big that surplus is and, and better ourselves continually. For a number of years I, I was always under the belief that farmers bought retail, sold wholesale and paid the freight both ways in between, which basically to me meant you had very little control on your income and your outcome really for the year. But really there's a whole raft of things that you can manage within your business which will have positive impact or a huge impact on how, how your business performs for you and it's within your control. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.